And then I just take you up the road a little bit to the very top end of Jervois Road. Um, this is where the, the horse-drawn trams um, were, the depot was for the trams and where the, the, the tram turned around. And so this streetscape today, when you, when you drive into this little bit of the street, it's remarkably wide and you kind of feel quite vulnerable in the width of the street. And, you know, it, it, the, 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 the historical reason for that is because of that original mode, the, the transport mode that this street accommodated. And, you know, here we're, we're in Heartland Residential One Hearn Bay and um, this is the, the mode of public transport, if you like, has, has changed, but um, the bus still does exactly the same thing. It comes here and it regularly turns around. In fact, in the 10 minutes that I was there taking those photographs, two buses came and turned around, so I was impressed by the frequency of um, public transport. And I'm reminding you that today is National Car Free Day, so I hope we all walked here. Um, and then, you know, when you look back down the axis of Jervois Road here, you immediately get that relationship and connection back to the city as well because of the iconic placement. I don't think Gordon Moller or Sky City were thinking quite that it would be perfectly on axis with Jervois Road, but it does line up rather beautifully as Sky Tower does seem to remarkably line up around our city in quite good places. Um, just again, reinforcing that, that scale of the streetscape. You know, and in this little piece of Jervois Road, the, the old corner shop is still used for a very sort of public um, function in terms of the Empress Garden Chinese restaurant, which is sort of um, famous within this western suburbs area. Been there for a very long time. Um, there's certainly real heritage value in the residential one and the nature of buildings that are in this streetscape and the sort of investment in restoration that is happening and, and in fact rebuilding as well as restoration. But also it's quite a mixed little neck of the woods in terms of some quite dense um, apartment style um, and terrace um, development and you'll see that all, all the way back along Jervois Road, sort of 1930s and 40s um, apartment development, quite art deco some of it, but giving you that more mixed dense fabric within what's quite a, um, a, a strong residential one area. And then this site, I think, you know, you often come here, well, I often used to come here and not understand why this was built to the street and had such an urban sort of quality in what was such a residential neighbourhood. But this was the original depot site, and it's part of the adaptive reuse of this site that the stables building has been turned into a residential use, and in behind um, this building here is a new terrace apartment giving again that sort of change in terms of density, but still responding to the heritage, if you like, of um, the origins of why this site is here. And then the, the second place I wanted to take you to is Richmond Road, not far up the road from that Jervois Road spot, the, the Richmond buildings, um, the area that's now called West Lynn in terms of a little um, town centre, a place that some of you might recognise more today is, is that. Um, corner intersection on Richmond Road. But here I thought this, this image is lovely. This is waiting for the first tram to come, which is sort of, you know, we don't quite welcome things in the same way, do we, these days? But I did think that that was rather delightful. I would have liked to have sort of been able to envisage what the little school children did when the tram arrived, whether they sort of sang and marched or did something to be part of that commemoration. But again, this is a, another neighbourhood which has quite strong heritage to it, but is also changing quite rapidly. Um, it's intensifying. It's becoming much more of a, a community that recognises itself as a community. Um, buildings are both adapting themselves for new uses and taking on the traditional use in a more contemporary way, which is interesting. I mean, the bus stop is right across the road, and here the little grocery shop that used to be quite a dire dairy has turned itself into the, the place that now urban dwellers pick up their dinner on the way home. Um, those sorts of things are sort of adapting to the type of environment that we live in. And this, this one intersection has probably the best, the three best masonry villas that I know. I mean, I'm sure Ian can tell us that there are better places in the city. But on these, these three quarters, there are these fantastic buildings that for quite some time have been dilapidated and they're, they're becoming now um, obviously very prized, but also refurbished and um, um, looked after in a way that really sort of signifies their value. 
And interesting, this is this is also um, an old building which has been um, reused residentially as part of the same site. It is part of the original site. And so again, just sort of reusing the, the, the heritage fabric as part of um, today's landscape. And you can see again in this um, little area, more adapted reuse of residential build or buildings into residential use. And then the Sleepyhead site was part of uh, is part of this community as well. The big Sleepyhead, um, you know, um, mattress and um, beds, I guess, <laughs> factory site. Um, and interesting, I mean, you know, some of us will look at this and think that was a leafy building, and it was too. Um, it's got over some of its issues, I think. But when I look at this slide, I see, you know, a very Sydney-type density in terms of terrace housing, a high-quality streetscape environment, very green and yet very dense as well, and actually a really great contribution, I think, to the density of this little community and why it is um, revitalising, because you do have that increased residential density on your doorstep. And also part of this development is that live-work mixed-use character of redeveloped sites, which again adds to the vibrancy around daytime activity and use, and having more people shopping and being within this local environment. So then just running through some of the images of this little town centre and seeing how, you know, there is quite a lot of um, high density residential slipping into the, right within the, the fringes of the town centre and adding to the, the sort of, you know, eyes on the street and activity of what's happening um, within the centre as part of that sort of urban renewal um, and sort of good urban design principles as well. And, you know, again, you can talk about architecture and we're not here to, to do that, um, but I think, you know, the sort of the change in activity and density are things that reinforce this traditional town centre now as a, as a town centre today or a, a little noble community um, within um, the wider sort of um, residential fabric. And there's quite a lot of nice little adaptive reuse in terms of business. The city itself has done a lot of investment within the community in terms of the new community centre, which is you know, highly used and greatly valued, and that's the newest farmer's market in Auckland, so it's three Sundays of the month, I think. It's also one of the communities that has the sort of the great streets in terms of um, the plain tree street trees. Um, and it has now quite a lot of quite new contemporary um, architectural additions which butt into the heritage um, buildings. And you know, again, those are things that we would debate endlessly, I'm sure, if we had a conversation about whether these are good or bad examples. But I think to me, you know, the new architecture here does at least look to understand the scale and rhythm of the buildings and then respond to that. And I know, I mean, I often get pilloried when I say I like this example. I think, you know, in this audience that might be a brave thing to say, but I think, you know, certainly in the horizontal, it, it does respond to the scale of the <coughs> original building. It, it turns the corner really well, this building, and takes you back down the lane to where there's quite a lot of um, office development and behind on this little um, lane. And it really, you know, is about contemporary architecture within that um, historical built environment and not being afraid to change and have new development, but recognising that new development is new and it's not um, trying to attempt to replicate um, what was there in the past. Um, there's also you know, taller development happening within the street. And again, that I think the scale of these streets, because they are wide, does give you that ability to increase scale at times within the street. And then if you look hard at the end of the street, you can actually get that wider landscape connection back out to Mugafau on that axis as well. And I think, you know, again, that's one of the strong things about this interplay of natural environment and cultural environment in Auckland that gives this unique sort of landscape heritage is that you frequently do get those connections out because of the volcanic and the, um, the ridgeline topography of the city. You often either get views out or views to um, those landform elements, which I think is you know, makes our landscape and our life in our um, communities a richer one. And similarly, that's the connection to the, to the natural landscape. There's often too, in the inner city, particularly suburbs of Auckland, that um, connection back to, um, to the Auckland and the central area of the city. So thank you.